Hey, Flimsy Lunch Trey here, and welcome to our Friday edition video here on World of Warships, where today I'm going to be featuring the Tier 8 Dutch Tech Tree Cruiser, the Harlem. So this is a heavy cruiser. Uh, it basically has these German 203mm guns, and also has 120mm dual-purpose uh, artillery guns as well. So I'm just going to go over some pros and cons from the WoWs Wiki article for the Harlem, and then I'm going to talk more about my thoughts of the ship overall and how I recommend playing the ship. So um, with the pros, a very well armored midsection and also has an extended bow and stern belt. Durable cruiser, thanks to her resilient armor and fast reloading repair party. And if I remember to, I'm gonna recircle back to that repair party because it has the quick cooldown of essentially 40 seconds. Starting with Harlem high tier Dutch cruisers can store two airstrike charges or previously it's just one. Strong AA suite aided by the defensive A fire consumable, which you can see I have uh, with the hotkey Y at the bottom of the screen. Access to the hydroacoustic search and um, an improved repair party consumable with the fast cooldown. Excellent concealment and can outspot the vast majority of cruisers in her matchmaking bracket. So in this battle, it's all tier eight, so this works out really well for us. The cons is, is that she has a very weak main body performance due to her poor dispersion, limited range, and slow reload, and we're going to circle back to that. Also with the low DPM, essentially on par with tier 6 cruisers for effective damage output, um, you don't get any torpedoes, uh, vulnerable to damage over time, uh, effects with battleship duration, fires, and floods, so um, they, if you get set on fire, uh, you're going to burn for a longer, so you took a nice little hit there. Top speed and rudder shift are fairly sluggish. So there's two modules you can research. Um, so the first you want to go for is the hull upgrade, which is going to give you more health. It's going to give you more AA maneuverability. Um, and then the second next is the gun fire control system, um, because you can see that our gun range right now is 15.6. And then otherwise, I think it's like 14 something. Um, basically you get an additional 10% extra range on the, I think with the gunfire control system upgrade. So do the, the hull B first, and then you can work on extending the range with your guns. Um, overall with this ship, um, in terms of how do I think she performs and handles as a tier eight cruiser, honestly, in my opinion, she's really average, um, to the point that I would rather play other tier eight cruisers than the Harlan, uh, the tier eight uh, light cruiser, Dutch um, Dutch cruiser, that's the D7 Provincian, uh, in my opinion, plays much better than the Harlan uh, for several reasons. It also gets access to a heal. Um, so for tier eight cruiser to get a heal is not typically standard. Um, it's real hit and miss, but more and more of the ships Wargaming is introducing into World Warships. Uh, more cruisers are finding uh, heals. Uh, we're back, I mean, even a year ago, it wasn't as common to find uh, heals on tier eight cruisers. So, um, so yeah, so my overall opinion of the Harlem is that she's just an okay tier eight cruiser. Um, I think there are better tier eight cruisers in the game. Um, I don't think she's a must have uh, by any means, but it's kind of, you know, as you're grinding up to the Johan de Witt, uh, in the tier 10 uh, golden line, uh, as I guess it's translated to. Uh, those two, um, I've played both of them so far, uh, the tier 10 on the public test server, and I have the Yuhan D. Whitnell, and I'm just much more pleased with the, uh, the ship overall, but mostly in terms of the gun performance, because that's really what I think that lacks a lot here on the, the Harlem is her guns. So her high explosive, um, it's not outstanding. Her armor piercing is not outstanding either. Um, I mean, you can have broadside targets and feel like you should have do a lot more damage to them, and you're just simply not. Um, the maximum damage of the high explosive and armor piercing is really low. Um, it's not great. And so it can be difficult when you're dealing with a ship that has poor main guns because right when you're playing with ships ideally is if they have the ship has good guns even if the rest of the ship sucks like it's not that huge of a deal but when you get a ship that's 
revolves around the guns not performing so well, then that can be a bit frustrating. Um, and I've been uh, a little frustrated with this lightning here. I'm trying to get him into C because he's playing really passive. And um, so we're going to see how that things go for him later. Um, but the main battery just overall isn't really outstanding. And I imagine part of the reason that Wargaming uh, has done this is because of having access to the airstrike. So if you uh, land the airstrike well on ships, you can get a lot of damage. You can often start uh, fires quite well. Um, I mean, I, I've done 10k salvos with the airstrikes uh, on enemy ships, and I think you're going to see that in the second battle. So I have two clips I'm going to show to you, um, and just how I would recommend playing the ship overall. So um, the Harlem is this tricky ship in the sense that um, enemy ships can push and rush into her, can really bully her, and there's not a whole lot she can do. Um, and it forces you to kind of have to go into this uh, play of... Uh, moving away, utilizing islands, and just dropping HE strikes while maybe even staying dark, um, undetected, uh, so on and so forth. Um, but her guns just, they're not great, but they get much better when you reach to the Yohan Wit and the uh, Golden Lion. So uh, if you're grinding this ship, uh, hang in there. I would actually, because of now the operation changes where you can play tier 6, tier 8 ships, I might go to the extent of recommending you just focus on grinding the ship in operations um, versus in randoms because this ship because it's really average to maybe slightly less than average i would say um it's a hard ship to make work and it really relies on you having good teammates so when you play a ship that relies on having good teammates often that's not a good sign um just because when you are required to <laughs> like do well on a ship, uh, that, I don't think I'm really frustrated with the lightning. Uh, when you're required to do really well with a ship that is just not a good ship overall, and really requires your team to help you um, perform well on the ship, um, and that your team's playing well and playing the objectives and doing as they should, it's just asking a lot of your team to expect high standards. Um, and overall performance of the ship. So, um, so that's my general impression um, of the ship. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about her consumable access. Um, so I guess maybe I should also say mention about the airstrike. So uh, with the setup we have here in Harlem, um, what we have is a 12 kilometer uh, airstrike range. So it works really well. So like when you have this Alabama like pushing into us, um, he's just entered, what, 11 kilometers away, something like that. That's really helpful. Um, your planes will get shot down if you try to do drops when there's, like, let's say there's three ships that have decent AA. Uh, it, that's definitely going to be a challenge for you um, with not getting much damage off just because of the AA uh, knocking out um, the ships. So that was the 8700 south on the Alabama. Um, and you just really aren't going to get high d uh, damage value numbers out of your main battery. Um, but I feel like I have found that most of my damage will come from airstrikes if I aim them well. Uh, and also the setting of fires, where the main guns are just uh, there to be there, <laughs> so it would seem. Uh, so airstrikes, 12 kilometer range. Um, so that is difficult when you have ships running from you. Um, that really puts you at a disadvantage, per se, in my uh, opinion, um, when you're playing this ship. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the actually the AA armament of the ship. So the AA is really fantastic uh, on the Harlem regardless. You're going to see us get even more planes um, to deal with here shortly, as we're going to get into a bit of hot water um, here in a little bit. But the AA uh, of the ship is really good. Um, it's quite impressive, especially when you get to pair it with the defensive AA fire consumable. Um, as we have this Kaga um, coming in here, as we finish off the Alabama with a Dutch airstrike, or the <laughs> HE airstrike. Um, but just being able to have access to the defensive AA really helps. So sometimes it's frustrating with this ship in the sense of, well, yeah, her main battery isn't great, 
but she gets the air strike, she gets good AA, she gets a hydro acoustic search, she gets a uh, repair party with a uh, quick uh, cooldown of the 40 seconds. And that's honestly, in my opinion, what helps make this ship work overall. Um, so we have this Bismarck who's pushing back in, so we don't really want to take that engagement, so we're going to go ahead and move away. So we're going to work to move behind this island. So we're going to be cheeky, shoot some HE. There you can see just 285, one pin, two non-pins on a battleship. Uh, so the dispersion of the ship is not uh, very fantastic either. Uh, it doesn't have high um, shell arcs, so you're going to struggle trying to shoot over islands that time. And when you have ships pushing into you like uh, what's happening here, that's where your airstrikes really begin to shine uh, when you utilize them. Um, just because if you take a lot of focus fire, I mean, you could say this for about any ship, uh, you're just really going to have a hard time uh, performing well on that ship um, and losing health. So um, I got my eyes on this low health Baltimore across the map. Uh, I would really try to finish him off. Uh, Baltimore, it's tech tree ship. You know, that doesn't get a heal, right? But you get a heal uh, for the tier 8 Harlem. So the Veneto uh, polishes him off. Um, so let me pull up these uh, AA values again. Um, so yeah, so you get the dual purpose 120 millimeter uh, turrets. Um, I'm seeing a firing range on the Wilds Wiki of 5.19 range. So there's that. <laughs> um, the HE value, uh, the fire chance value, once you move up to Harlem from the tier seven, I think it drops. So it's a little bit harder to set fires. Um, so you, it seems like your HE airstrike has more chances of starting a fire uh, than you do with your main battery guns. Um, so keep that in mind. But the AA defense is good, especially then you get to pair it with your defensive AA and you get to use uh, your priority sector as well. So here, Bismarck's running away. There's nothing we can really do here uh, with our airstrike. So we're just gonna let them uh reload so we have one ready and then we have the second one which i think we're roughly about a minute reload time um so if you use the airstrikes well um in quick succession uh let's say you go ahead and drop your airstrike on a location and then you see how the enemy ship is trying to maybe they're conscious enough they're maneuvering to dodge and then you go ahead and drop it where they're uh, trying to dodge uh, or maneuver away too uh, so that's really what's very helpful with um, when you try to use those in succession. Sometimes I'm just going to use one at a time um, and not try to use both at the same time. But there are times um, that can work. Like here you saw we did 1500 damage to the Bismarck and we got three penetrations and only like um, 1500 damage. So that's really frustrating again because you're just going to see this uh, as a recurring factor here uh, as you watch this um, shoot this Bismarck uh, sailing away because now we're kind of the, on the front line here uh, we have our Enterprise who's actually moving up which is fantastic um, <laughs> it says two pins for 1200 um, we set a fire and we're gonna move to this island but we also have this enemy Edinburgh uh, behind the island here and we have the Kaga continuing to focus us but for us we do have the AA which is gonna help us here uh, but this Edinburgh, I'm kind of concerned. He has torpedoes. If I show too much broadside, his armor piercing will do much more damage to us. But I go ahead and switch to the armor piercing here, hoping that I can catch him uh, out here. Go ahead and drop an airstrike. We finish off the Bismarck. We pick up the AA defense. So there's a lot happening all at once. And the Edinburgh has um, angled in. So we only we get three pins still and one over pin. But it's like just 4,000 damage. Um, so I decided to go ahead and turn out here, which is probably a bit of a mistake because we're going to be showing too much side to him here. I was hoping I could sneak in behind the island here. And I'm hoping this airstrike will finish him off, uh, but not everything lands. Uh, so we're not looking too good right now. So I go ahead and take advantage with the rear turrets because we need to kill him. And then we still have our heal ticking, move back forward. That torpedo is not going to arm. The second one is and we're going to move back up along the island, so then he's not going to be able to drop us from that direction. So um, you can see the AA, uh, the plane kills, are really stacking up now. We're over 40 at this point, and I'm really asking my Enterprise to help me out here. 
Um, but it's fantastic because this Enterprise is fantastic. He's just moving up and he's just a couple kilometers, like four kilometers behind me. And it's really helping me out here um, in this situation. The Kagasins in dive bombers, we want to be broadside to the dive bombers. We barely survived that hit, we're down to 400. Uh, so things are getting really heated up here. Um, we'd like to try to get some damage with our um, airstrikes on the Kaga before he leaves our range. Um, so now we're not going to be able to use any more airstrikes, but we have a submarine in the middle of the map. Um, as we're going to go ahead and keep cutting away. And our quick cooldown has helped us. So we already have the next heal up, and we're about to have our next defensive AA fire consumable come off cooldown. And so we're going to keep shooting the Kaga as we're cutting away. We're going to move towards Bravo, and we're going to prioritize our A sector, get our defensive A uh, fire consumable active. Um, and so we're going to just keep stacking on um, some further uh, damage with the planes here. But the Enterprise, I think, got some good uh, hits in there. Uh, one of the big weaknesses with the Dutch cruiser line, which you're going to see here, is how do you combat with enemy submarines? Um, because uh, you do not have any depth charges. Uh, so Wargaming decided that you should not have any depth charges with the Dutch cruisers. And I have been in a Dutch cruiser division before and one sub wipe all three of us out because there's not uh, much we can do. He surfaces, he goes back under real quick. Maybe you can't get your guns uh, on the enemy ship in time. Uh, so it can just be a very frustrating experience when trying to deal with submarines. Granted, you have the hydroacoustic search, which helps give you a leg up. Um, but overall, you're going to be really struggling here. So he's really, he's right there, and we only now just detect him. Um, so he's just that close, and it doesn't look like he's using the homing torpedoes. He's using ones that uh, do significantly more damage. So we're just trying to use our wits about us um, in how we... Um, we're turning, we're cutting our speed, um, just to throw him off if he is just using those non-homing torpedoes, um, which seems that he's definitely not using them in this battle. So now I'm thinking he's gonna be somewhere behind us, maybe on the back side of the submarine. Granted, some submarines have the rear firing torpedoes during firing, uh, so you really have to be mindful of that. But with our hydroacoustic search, we pick him up here, uh, waiting for him to get closer to the surface. We'll go ahead and use an HE airstrike, but um, yeah, so he has we're firing torpedoes, but we kill him in time, and I think we could have ducked those torpedoes as well. So submarines are definitely going to be an issue for you to deal with uh, when you're in this class. Now we're going to do really well on the team score just because we've shot and, uh, shot down 50 planes. Um, plane ribbons uh, really boost your uh, base XP values, so I think overall, if it wasn't for the planes, we'd probably be like third or fourth, I'm going to guess, on our team. Um, but because you're kind of this tier 8 AA powerhouse, really helps you out a lot. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next battle. There's going to be a little more talk of how I like to try to utilize this ship. So here I decided to go ahead and move up towards these islands. Uh, I want to get close enough to use these 12 kilometer um, HE airstrike. Um, so we have this Pomeran moving up. Um, when you have big battleships uh, like the Pomeran, um, Especially like, you know, he's maneuvering to avoid that HE airstrike and as a result, he's basically not screwed himself into the island. So all I have to do is wait for my next airstrike to uh, reload and we'll probably have good chances of causing significant damage here um, on this Palmer. So uh, we're going to look, see, looks like he's reversing a little bit. So we're going to drop this uh, to the rear of him. And even if he tries to re-accelerate forward, he's a big slow battleship, he's not going to be able to avoid it in time. So we're going to see what damage value we do here to the Pomeran, as our strike is just about to land here in 5 seconds. I'm trying to see how well we land the strike. So even when you don't have... Yeah, so 11,400. Uh, so really good stuff, and we set a fire and incapacitated something as well. Um, i trying to remember where my thought was going. Um, so even when you're in these situations like this, um, it's super helpful uh, to have that airstrike. But like, let's say you want to see where someone is at, um, but you don't even have your airstrike loaded, right? I can just press the four key, which I have binded to the airstrike. Um, and I can look on the map and uh, kind of get an idea of how maybe an enemy ship is positioned. So it's kind of like almost having a spotter plane, if you will. So I like to try to use that and being cheeky sometimes. 
So we have um, an Akatsuki here at Alpha. So we're going to go ahead and angle away. Um, we should be lucky enough that these torpedoes uh, possibly don't have range, but we're going to go ahead and try to find a window here in case they do. So I was trying to remember how, what range these Akatsuki torpedoes have. So it almost looks like these are like 10 kilometer torpedoes. Yeah, because they just went dark. Um, so we had to turn away uh, for that because we were trying to come out there to help our lion. Our lion player makes a huge mistake here. He just decides to yellow in through the cap, push into um, several battleships. There's a Zuma back there. He's got the Akatsuki. Uh, so that was a total. This, it's going to cost the lion his life. Total misplay from him. So what I'm trying to avoid is I don't want to move so far away from the enemy team um, that I'm not able to utilize my um, Dutch airstrikes, right? Uh, I want to be close enough uh, where I can utilize those. Uh, we saw this Pomeran somewhere on the 4-5 line. And what does it look like? There's a... I should see what the other ship with down there was with him. Was it Geniza now, I believe it was? Yeah. Um, so that our, our Palmer ended up picking off the enemy, Buscovicha. So that's good for us. And now I'm basically versing, and I want to try to get back uh, close here again and helping my teammate out because the Lion's basically doomed. We have a Neptune kind of holding uh, defense over Bravo, but I want to help the Synop out. I don't want the Synop to be uh, feel left alone. And it looks like the Lion has recognized his mistake and he's trying to run away. Uh, so we're going to see um, how things pan out for him. So we have our airstrike, so they're a little too far away for us to utilize it right now. So we're just going to keep an eye on them. Maybe this Pomeran, I'm thinking he might accelerate back forward so then we can utilize it. Um, we would like to go ahead and get this cap. So in my mind, I'm thinking we can move up and take the cap. So our concealment, if I'm looking at the minimap correctly, I forgot to double check that is 9.8 yeah 9.8 concealment so that's actually pretty good for being a tier 8 cruiser because you're not always so lucky with the tier 8 cruisers with their concealment um so i was going to go wide on a on the north end but with this good now pushing in that uh, means i can't uh push in and be aggressive so i decided to go ahead and change my course and i will get to some move up some island coverage here but i also want to see if i can't help out uh, my Gnaz and our friend, we've had one successful airstrike, did a little bit of damage on the Palmeran. We have another one coming in. Uh, we'll see how much damage it does. Yeah, 5,700. Um, so we're just going to try to focus on the uh, Gnaz and out here, but I accidentally shoot the sit up in the back a little bit. Um, and hopefully this Gnaz and will be pushed away. Looks like he's probably shooting torpedoes off and going wide, so that's why we want to tuck ourselves in behind the island here. My synop friend does not have hydroacoustic uh, search, so I go ahead and pop it for him to give him as much advance notice about these torpedoes coming in, but he's already reversing, uh, so he should be pretty wise on that. The enemy Akatsuki decides he's gonna show back up. I think the Algeri is detecting him because he's close enough. So I wanna deal with the Akatsuki because I don't want him to get torpedoes off on my synop friend. So we're gonna focus the DD for now. Uh, so we're getting multiple incapacitations. Those were all six pins, um, but not a whole bunch of damage. But I saw the Geniza now. He's being a bit aggressive um, and pushing in here. So that's going to be a bit of a pain here. So I decided at this point, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the armor piercing to help deal with this Geniza now pushing around here. Uh, the Synop fires at the Akatsuki, but still alive. And I think Algeri is maybe still firing on him because uh, we need to get rid of the Akatsuki uh, here. Um, so there's some more torpedoes coming in. So again, like our guns, two fires, pretty good damage. These are all going to be overpins and just 4,000. So our airstrikes tend to do more damage than our guns uh, do overall. <coughs> Excuse me. So our secondaries are going to a little action in here as well. And the Synop got a good hit in there. The Algeria got a good hit in there. And the Synop Secondaries take out the Akatsuki, so that's fantastic. I go ahead and trim a two minutes out of the footage here, just because I didn't want to make this a longer clip than necessary. The Palmeran is moving away. I decide that it's time for me 
and I got turned around and I was taking some shots at the enemy uh, back behind C. I decided we really need to pick up this cap. Um, it's five to four, but we really need, I uh, want to help our team with having uh, the cap advantage uh, because points are very important. They're part of the objective in the game. Um, so we want to be mindful of our cap control. So you're gonna see how this plays uh, into uh, effect um, here a little bit later into this match. So our setup friend's really low. Um, we don't have to push in here. Uh, basically, we just need to play uh, defense um, or if anything, kite away. Um, the setup's gonna have a hard time if the enemies are pushing in from the six, seven line into Bravo. Uh, if he reverses back out from behind this island, he's going to take a hit. But for some reason, he decides that it would be wise for him to move forward. And someone was detecting him. So he takes a pretty nasty chunk of damage there. I'm going to ask him to go ahead and get back. Because this Pomeran is going to be moving back and around this island. And before long, I'm going to be detected. So um, there's not much I'm going to be able to do for the synup here so i'm gonna go ahead and take a pot shot maybe palmer decides he's gonna he wants to shoot me instead of the synop so again i'm intentionally trying to help out my synop friend but he goes down and now um we have to deal with the palmer and so i thought i was going to be able to get away all right here because palmer going behind the island but the azuma has come out from behind the island on the four five line or the four line so he's going to keep a slit we also have this colorado i'm um, getting close to stepping on bravo uh, so at this point, we need to back off here and uh, try to buy some time. So now as we back out here, we're dark. Uh, I don't want to panic and run into the island. So when you're in these situations, you're the enemy too pushing in. Uh, paying attention to the mini map is very helpful so you don't accidentally run into the island and get yourself killed. Um, so just be mindful of that. So this palm run is actually pretty close to our conceal uh, concealment detectability radius. Um, but I want to try to be cheeky here and reset the Colorado from capping Bravo. Um, I have the same intentions here with the palm run. If I'm able to help it, I want to be able to reset the palm run here as well. Um, one of the things that you can get pretty good at or feel comfortable with is preemptively um, activating your repair party. So I saw that salvo coming in from the Pomeran, and I was like, we'll probably get max seal because some of those shells are going to land. So when you preemptively use your repair parties in situations like that, that means that the repair party is going to be back up uh, sooner for me. Now you may notice there's a brief pause in the Pomeran's secondaries when he's firing at me, and that's because he was bow on facing me. So if you can help your, help it, when you're dealing with these secondary battleships, if you can stay, keep them where their bow's facing you, then they don't have their secondaries firing at you as much because the secondaries are mounted along the starboard and port side of the ship. So we see the Colorado again. He's trying to cap Bravo, and we're going to try to reset him again. He's at max range. Uh, we get two reset ribbons in there. Um, I don't think he's really going to become closer again in range. Uh, so I have to try to trust that our team is going to be able to handle that. And we'll go ahead and pop our next repair part here. And we only have one more left after this. So I decided I'm going to try to take a uh, pot shot where I think the Pomeran might be kind of looking on the mini map. Um, but the shot's too late. <clears throat> a cap is flipped. Um, we have 10 defended ribbons. Defended ribbons also help out with base XP earnings. This Pomeran has decided uh, he doesn't want anything to do with us, and so he's going to sail away. Um, it looks like he has attention focus on Bravo. So, five shots connect, 2,000 damage. Like, <laughs> it's just that bad uh, in terms of the uh, main battery gun performance. You just can't expect a lot out of these guns. So here in this situation, uh, we have the Azuma uh, pushing towards us. Um, and so now we're going to have to deal with him. We're going to kite away. And I do need to make note, if you begin to damage saturate the HE superstructure of a ship and your penetrations aren't going to do as much damage. So we've probably saturated a little bit of the superstructure of that Pomeran as well as some of our teammates. That's probably why more of those damage value numbers are low. Uh, so perhaps it's a little bit unfair of me to be so harsh <laughs> with uh, those getting those low numbers. Um, 
but we're dealt with the cards that we have um, here in a situation. So um, what I'm doing here, I'm gonna be playing with my throttle a lot. You're gonna see that happening. And I just figured out, oh, he's not even moving, like he's sitting still. Um, as I wanna try to keep him within my 12 kilometer airstrike range, but at the same time, if I open up range, uh, it's going to help um, his salvos not be as accurate. So there we took some uh, the shells on the belt. So that means we uh, those were non-penetrations or ricochets. Uh, we're going to keep uh, utilizing our rudder shift here um, and dropping shots here. So here we're showing a little probably too much side maybe, but uh, the belt armor does okay in that situation. Uh, so if you're trying to utilize getting your front guns on, you can actually go ahead and start preemptively turning your rudder shift um, before you actually get your front turrets on because uh, the rudder shift turning time, meaning that your turrets are still gonna be on target, but you're already working to almost go uh, back the other direction by the time and then you might get a shot off here. Um, so at this point, the only thing I can really do here is harass this Azuma, try to keep his attention on me, give my teammates um, the Atlanta and the Nagato a bit of a break here and trying to just continue having the Azuma focus us. Our Atlanta is uh, taking damage. I think he's in the secondaries perhaps of the Pomeran. Uh, indeed, he does go down to the secondaries and they're about to flip Bravo. So uh, we're about to lose um, the cap advantage now. And so the enemy team uh, has the cap control, but we have a minute 30 left on the clock. So in this situation, as long as things are right, no one else dies, we should be able uh, to come out on top here points-wise. Here you see I'm playing with the throttle. Azuma uh, shoots over me. Now we're gonna be accelerate forward again. Uh, I think they're probably talking in chat that they need to get a kill. Um, otherwise, uh, it's likely that they will lose the game. So again, we only take a little bit of chip damage there. We're trying to be mindful of staying angled. We're trying our best uh, to avoid salvos in, uh, completely, play with our throttle, make it really hard time for him to guess uh, what exactly we're doing here. So this time we don't even slow down, we're still going. Uh, and that salvo is gonna land towards the rear of us. You can see the splashes in the water there. We're actually gonna get a really good HE airstrike here. So you're gonna see about 10,000 uh, so those airstrikes really come in handy if you're able to um, aim them well. It does take a little bit of time, um, but operations is a good place to test it out um, and getting a feel for it. But when you're dealing with human players, it can be a little bit more tricky. So 20 seconds on the clock, all we have to do is win. Uh, no one needs to be heroic at this point in time because we don't want to uh, anyone to die. Uh, I think there's another salvo <coughs> incoming from the Azuma. And I actually accelerate into this salvo a little bit. It's going to happen sometimes. And we took a 8300 damage there. So we're going to win. Come out on top here. And go to post battle results. 149,000 damage, one destroyed. Uh, 49 bomb hits. 10 defended. One solo cap. 12 set on fires, mostly by our HE airstrike. Uh, so that's pretty good performance. Now know that those defended ribbons and that solo cap is going to play in to our base XP uh, earnings on the team score. So there's a little bit of cherry picking with some of these videos. I've just been sitting on them for a while as I grind it up to the Johan de Witt. Um, so again, I would say this ship is by no means a carry ship. You really have to rely on your teammates. Uh, I was relying on my teammates to be able to uh, help me out there at the end and pulling some attention away uh, because overall, um, the ship uh, is a challenge. So main battery, 75,000 damage. Airstrike, 37,000 damage. Secondary batteries, 1,700. Fires, 34,000. Um, and this is what it ends with credits and XP with premium accounts. So, do I recommend Harlem as a really good ship? No, uh, she's pretty average to meh. Um, her saving grace is, I would say, the airstrike and the consumables, the hydrofusic search. Uh, the defensive AA and the fact that those repair parties have a cooldown time of 40 seconds is really, really helpful. Um, but things begin to shine more brightly when you reach the Johan de Witt and the Golden Lion. So that's going to cap it for today's video. We have an upgraded commander build video of the Harlem tomorrow. So if you want to see that, make sure to catch that. So if you liked this video, give a thumbs up. If you did not, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you are subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.